And there's Sandy. What up? There. That should do it. Still, is it really okay for me to be here? Shouldn't I be off fighting with everyone else? Huh? C class 7? Wait, Ash? What are all of you doing here? Sunny spot. Hello. We met Sydney and Maya. <laughs> Great twilight thing. Oh. Yeah, we saw that in the opening. It fills the lonely spaces in your heart with pure evil. Okay. Who? Kai. Tilia. Hmm. All right, maybe in the drama CD. Yes. Middle of the night. All right, so we're talking to people gathering till in Astair. Uh, uh, what do you have here? Alright. Alright, do you have any recipes here? No? Useless. <laughs> you don't even have a jukebox. Alright. Alster's risotto. Coolness. Oh, we have green exclamation point, so I guess side quests. Huh. Hello. Who are you? Who do we have here? Huh. His presence. Ah, yes. Who are you? Okay, Marcel Nielsen. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm. Was he blind, or is it the different Nielsen here in the, from the yeah from the Crossbell game? Yeah, I didn't uh, follow up on him, but huh? Was he blind? I don't know. You cover events all over the world. All right. Given the mix of weapons you have on hand, it'd be logical to conclude that you attend a military academy. A certain bracer I know. Yeah, maybe it's an it's a crossbell thing that I missed. <laughs> uh 
Alright. Is he the same Nielsen? Huh. Curious. There's another green star here. Maybe that's the one with the uh, missing sheep? Oh, the riding club! Hello! You can ride a horse! Yeah. Do the trainer's advice and brought everyone to Ulster where we can relax in nature. Alright. Yes. Ah. Nice, nice, nice. So we are headed towards... Oh, there's a green marker there too. Let's check it out. Here... Somewhere here. I think I'm going in the wrong direction, but there's a path here. What up, chicken? Okay, he doesn't care. <laughs> nope, not there yet. Here, alright. What's this? Oh, a grave. Is it a grave or a monument or something? Graveyard? Who's this? Oh, Lenheim family residence. Oh, Olivier Lenheim. Yep. It's the name that he used while staying in the borough. Okay, so... Oh, we managed to get some flowers. The group offered a small flower bouquet they found at the store. Okay. Cool. So, no more green markers here? Well, we do have two red markers. So, let's check on Kai and Tilia. Let's aim first. Hello! Hello. There's something sparkling there. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to reread the drama CD, but I think they're there. Yeah, they work together because there was some sort of stray Jaegers or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're the new class seven. Oh, yeah, they're the ones in. Oh, man, they're, they were in the opening of the game. Jesus Christ. Possibly. I'd like to help if... Yeah, okay. I saw the black grass in Asgillioth Basin, north of town. Growing in the middle of the basin. The Forbidden Basin, alright. A lot of ancient ruins and artifacts. There was that incident with those Jaegers, alright. And stuff and the stuff with the artifact the year before that. Maybe that's where Oliver got that artifact thing that allows him to communicate 
that communications artifact. Well, I hope we got the chance, so... To the north, alright. Yeah, the distillery also has a red marker, and there's something shiny here. Kobe and the Mysterious Museum. What? Kobe, alright. Sure, sure, sure. The Immoral Hero. Alright. I don't get it. Maybe they were relevant, I don't know. All I know is we are headed towards the distillery. The hell are you doing there? Hello. Mayor Matho. Oh. Okay. Coolness. Uh, where's the distillery here? Where are you? Pearl. Block. Cats and alcohol have a close relationship? <laughs> they found an artifact in a basin near the town. Shape of a lamp. Alright. Eternal can Candelar. Cool. So let's talk to the people here in the distillery. Pretty sure Ash is gonna invite them to drink. Is fee legal to drink? I think it's 20 for you to be able to drink here. Oh, alright. <laughs> We should speak with the people here just in case. Let's talk to you first. Hello. What? Saw through what? I have next to nothing on her. Alright. Oh. Tell me the military also took the wine here. Huh. Mirio, what up? What's that? Just received an order from Ordis for our next batch. Blue Blanc? Why do I feel Blue Blanc? But I couldn't get anywhere. Okay. Paper, not a card. Blue Blanc leaves cards. When seven lions visit in the first day of summer, the maiden will wait in the north in vain, planning out her moves. So I guess that's... Aryan Road. Yeah, seven. Maybe class seven. Members of Thor's class seven who came here to Ulster. Oh, Musée! Okay. I mean, she knew we'd make it all the way here. Alright. Yeah. Yeah, the north. Osgiliath Basin. 
Oh. All right. Do we have? Do they have equipment shops here? I am dying for some upgrades. Gasco store. Let's check. Anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, I'll be doing some upgrades. And hopefully we get that here. Arms and armor factor. All right, so I'm, I'll be doing some upgrades and I'll be right back. All right, we are headed towards the Ascaliath Basin. Okay. Oh, it's a stronger reaction. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right, search the basin. Hey, oh. uh, did it just suddenly get darker? Is a storm coming or what? Yeah. I don't think it's a storm. The air feels different somehow. I thought it was just because of the passage of time. Okay, we have a trial chest here. Wonder who it's from. Ash Altina, level 73. No? That's a 10 level difference. We'll do that later. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, check this out. What? Uh, that's the Osgiliath Basin, huh? Okay. The view is stunning but unsettling at the same time. And what's all the way down there? Maybe Pleroma Grass? Looks like we hit the jackpot. I think those are cars. Could be dangerous. Stay on your toes. Or some sort of vehicles. Anyway. Let's nope. go guns. I think we're gonna trigger some uh, cutscene here, and I think that's a uh, resting station? Is that it? Is that a resting Yeah, it's a resting station. Okay, so it looks like we're in for a fight here. Kinda looks like an airship. With a lot of Pleroma grasses. Okay. So let's save here and continue on. Yeah, I think we're in for a fight. There are a lot of Pleroma grasses. Look! Over there! Just as we thought. Uh, That's the landing craft in the Pentagral. Oh, okay. Damn, look at all these creepy ass flowers. And over there, just the ladies we thought we'd see. Oh! Muse and uh, Le Guin. What the hell are they doing here? Duchess Mildine. Aurelia Le Guin. Currently the strongest swordsman in the continent. Muse. And Principal Aurelia. Oh, you finally arrived. My young horned lion. The hell is your deal? Both of you. Welcome, Thor's Branch Campus's Class 7 Special Operations. My name is Mildeen. Mildeen Yuzalith de Cayenne. Mildeen, Mildeen Yuzalith de Cayenne. I am heiress to the Cayenne Duchy and sponsor of the Viceland Army. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance at last. It's kind of like the Noble Alliance is repeating again, but... This time, only the Cayenne is sponsoring the army. Alright. Our acquaintance. Hmm. A new introduction for your new identity, is that it? Oh, Yuna. You'll have to forgive me for hiding the truth from you. But Elise and Alfin know. Muse was an old nickname of sorts. One my parents gave me before they passed. Alright. 
After the accident, however, their duchy was inherited by my uncle Croy. No sooner had he taken his seat as the new Duke Cayenne, than I was shipped off to Heimdall, out of sight and out of mind. Oh, Croy, is that the asshole Cayenne from the Civil War? There, I spent close to a decade as a student at St. Astraea. A decade? All the while knowing that my uncle's actions would one day lead to civil war. Oh. What? That's impossible. You're saying that as a little kid, you knew there was going to be a civil war? It only made sense. I could see what my uncle would make of House Cayenne's assets. The machinations of the other four great houses and the Reinford group as well. The Empire's relationships with Crossbell and the Republic. The Blood and Iron Chancellor's plots. And she's been uh, watching closely the events that happened Excluding here. Excluding supernatural elements such as the Society and the Divine Knights. All of these factors allowed me to predict that the Noble Alliance would move to suppress the reformist faction by force, and that it would all lead to Duke Cayenne's, to my Uncle Croy's inevitable oh, downfall. Oh, so Croy... Croy... Croy is his name. We only know him as Duke Cayenne. <laughs> if you were anyone else, I'd think that was a bluff. Lady Mildine contacted me right at the close of the Civil War, as an ally of Count Egret. I'd known of her since she was a child when she predicted every twist and turn of the Northern War, right down to the Empire's proposal. I made up my mind. I would see Lady Mildine as the next head of House Cayenne. Not that sham of a man Marquis Ballad. Yeah. I agree with that move. Ballad should have been stepped on by the, the Magic Knights. Though I must admit to this day, I find both her ambition and the accuracy of her predictions intimidating. What the hell is her ambition? For instance, she sought contact with the Witch of Ouroboros to bolster her list of allies. Oh, maybe that's why Vila was outcast by the Anglis. And by the end of last year, she had foreseen the National Mobilization Law, the war with Calvert, and even the curse overtaking the Empire. How the hell did she know about the curse? Last year? Damn, she's like some kind of monster. Yeah. You can't be clairvoyant. Hmm. So what is it? Causality? I merely look at the pieces in play and consider how they will interact. Yeah. No clairvoyance necessary. I think it's causality, so who's better at causality, you or Kia? I see the current state of things, the events that led up to this point, and the multitude of futures spreading out before us. And, most importantly, I see the goal of the one who controls the game board. Osborne. So what's his, uh, what's his game? At the moment, Chancellor Osborne is unmistakably that person. Prince Oliver noticed this as well, and did all he could to stop Osborne's ambitions. But it became clear to me that he never quite understood the extent of the Chancellor's plans. Which is why I started devising some plans of my own. The first was getting the General here to take over as principal of the Thor's branch campus. Oh. And the second was claiming the title of Duchess Cayenne and recruiting soldiers to my side behind the scenes. Then, when the Great Twilight broke out, I established the Viceland Army. It is with this very force that I intend to stop Operation Jormungand. Perhaps you could say, they're the dagger I prepared to strike at the heart of the serpent. Can we trust you, though? Muse. I'm finally starting to see what Yusis was talking about. I don't quite understand how, but you really do intend to fight them, don't you? I don't think you can win. The Imperial Army has grown to a massive size with the recent draft. It may very well be the largest force ever assembled. An army of a million strong poised to destroy Calvert. Yet you still plan to stand against them? Yes, that's exactly right. I don't think she has a choice. <laughs> Are those women we met earlier another part of your plans? The ones affiliated with the Principality of Remaferia and a certain other country. A certain other country? What? So you ran into them, did you? Ooh. Must be fate. I'm pretty sure it's the brunette, but what the hell? Certain other country. What? But you are correct. We invited them here to discuss their cooperation. I imagine they're secretly conferring with their respective countries as we speak. All right, I'm starting to see what you're after now. I still don't get the other lady, the brunette. It's gonna mean a lot of bloodshed. 
Even if it's successful, there will be a ton of casualties. I don't think they care about that anymore. True. I estimate it will result in hundreds of thousands of deaths. Remember, the Civil War was relatively bloodless. Though in the worst case scenario, it could be millions, civilian and soldier alike. So many dead. You're serious about this? I am. At this point, the Imperial Army has gained too much momentum for us to be able to stop it outright. Erebonia was already the greatest military power in Zemiria. And like you said, conscription has only further increased its strength. That's without even factoring in the Panzer Soldats, railway cannons, and airships. It has the advantage in both numbers and technology. And even if the others don't help, Osborne has his own Divine Knight. What's more, the Chancellor has Ouroboros at his beck and call. Oh yeah, and that. And above all else, there's the Great Twilight itself. Its curse removes any chance that those involved in the conflict could grow weary of war. At this early phase, many are able to resist its influence, but that won't last forever. Yep. It's only a matter of time until every soul in Erebonia will be able to think of nothing but war. Which is why I presented the other nations an ultimatum. Oh. Do nothing and allow themselves to be swallowed up by the Empire, forever stained by its curse or join me in one final effort to keep the world from ending. Fighting back, no matter the cost. Is this gonna be a uh, grand coalition against Erebonia? That's what I told those women you met, and it's what I've told everyone else I've been in contact Who with. Who else have you been in contact with? <sighs> Just how many countries have yeah. you spoken to? Wait. You're telling me you've talked to everyone already? Much like Operation Jormungand itself, my plan is well underway. The bell cannot be unrung. Even if I were to die, the choice to fight or be overtaken would still remain. Now, I'll keep my predictions as to what they will choose to myself. But, humans are foolish and prideful, but they tend to show their true colors and their true strength in times of crisis. In the end, that will be the deciding factor. Unbelievable. <laughs> You've got guts. Even with your predictions, this can't have been easy. Okay, so what do we do about the these Pleroma grasses here? But, Muse, why join us? Hmm? I can see your resolve. And I get what you're trying to do. Yeah, 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 all right. So everything has been planned out since even way before the Civil War. So, why did she join Class 7? But what I don't get is why you joined Class 7. What purpose did that serve? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was through Muse that Le Guin did the transfer. If everything you just told us is true, wouldn't it have been more effective for you to stay behind the scenes? And even if enrolling at the branch campus was part of your plan, you didn't need to transfer to Class 7. Maybe she really likes Reen. Wasn't sticking with us through everything that happened in the Grawl an unnecessary risk? I... <laughs> I only did what would benefit me, naturally. How could I resist the chance to get close to the son of the <laughs> Chancellor? The Ashen Awakener himself. Called it. He seemed like he would have some connection to the curse. So I thought that learning more about him would be advantageous in the long run. Of course, it didn't hurt that Instructor Reen is totally my type. <laughs> okay, that part I believe. Yep. But the rest of that explanation was bullshit. Hey, you're talking like Ash. Agreed. That sounds like a job for one of your pieces. As a player, it would be safer for you to stay removed from all this. And that includes you talking to us in person right now. <laughs> yeah, we can still surprise you. Well, when I connected can. with everyone in the Grawl, I felt a warmth inside you, Muse. No matter what you might say now, you couldn't have fabricated that. Your feelings toward all of us are genuine. That's the one thing I can say with absolute certainty. Altina. <laughs> your poker face is starting to crack, Egret. Still, that little trick of yours is something else. You could really give Osborne a run for his money. And this plan you've come up with is probably the best chance anyone has of shutting down the Empire. 
But the question is, yeah. can you live with yourself afterward? Yeah, you've thought the plan up, but I'm guessing you sure as hell wish there was another way. Uh, yeah, because bottom line, if they lose, they lose. If they win, Muse would be the instrument of Everbonia's downfall. So I guess we're doing the Oliver thing and providing a third option, again. Listen, Muse, you may not think so, but you really are just a regular girl. What? Your friendships with Elise and Alfin, your pride in our class, your major crush on Instructor Lean, <laughs> they're all part of that. Gotta emphasize major there. That dirty mind of yours and the way you tease people can be a little annoying, I admit. Still... You're just an ordinary girl who loves sweets, gossip, and all sorts of other regular stuff. Same kind of girl you'd find anywhere. Sure, you may also be a genius who can come up with plans to change the fate of the world, but that's beside <laughs> the point. Man, I'd like to see a discussion between Muse and Kia. There's no way an ordinary girl like you would be okay with a plan that would cost millions of people their lives, is there? <laughs> Yeah, she's not Osborne. Oh, I get it. You wanted to tell us what you were up to. Oh. Because every plan you came up with involved a huge sacrifice. And she's looking for uh, an outside perspective. And you were hoping Class 7 yeah. would be able to help you find a better solution. I... <laughs> Let me put it another way. What do you really want, Muse? Well, I guess she already answered who she is. Now we need to know what she wants. I'm not asking future Duchess Mildine Useleth de whatever. <laughs> I'm asking Muse Egret, member of Class 7. What do you want to do? Yuna, I... Join us in the search for Reen? The truth is... I... I... Well, isn't this a touching sight? Who's that? Kinda of sounds like Campanella. Oh! The asshole main campus. Those uniforms. They're from the main campus. And isn't that... Ah! Look! Mr... Ooh! What up? Major? Oh, and Shirley, hello. Fritz Giethner, Ada something. Ada Grant. And Cedric Asshole. And the Tenacious One. Yeah, Crown Prince Asshole. And Bloody Shirley. We meet again, Class 7. Yeah, you have us outnumbered, so... Don't try to run. We have you surrounded. Ada... Fritz? And... What's going on? It's been some time, Class 7. How convenient to find all of you in one place. Ah, former instructor Irving. I wish I could say I was surprised to see you on their side. Okay. I take it you've chosen to remain with the military. Ah, all right. He is a military man. Receptive as ever, former Principal Le Guin. I have some plans of my own. I've since taken on the position of field exercise supervisor for the Thor's main campus. For your safety, I would advise you all to come quietly. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Kurt. How have you been since the Grawl? Please let me punch all of them. Your Heinz. Is that the Sanguine Ogre? What the shit is she doing in a Thor's uniform? Oh, you like it? I thought I filled it out nicely. <laughs> Everyone's here. Just like the Intelligence Division said they would be. What? The would-be Imperial Assassin Ash Carbide and all of his Class 7 accomplices. Even Lady Mildeen suspected instigator of the recent armed uprisings. As a representative of both Thor's and the Imperial family, Man, it like is my duty to take you all in. 
What's mug? Mm. <laughs> Go ahead and try. I'm sorry, but I can't let that happen. What? You think you're hot shit now that you've got some shiny new toys? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. After all, what good is power if you can't exercise it? And right now, you are all powerless to stop me. Especially given that my sniper has a bead on your Rakshasa right now. Claire? Oh, uh, Blitz, the Blitz. Yeah, Gareth, the Blitz. The Red Constellation's here too? I called in the big guns. This whole thing seems a little petty, but whatever. <laughs> I'm only here to fulfill His Highness's orders. Between the Jaegers and Major Urban, they've staged a two-pronged offensive. Having to fight my way through both of them and ensure Lady Mildine's safety might prove a tad bothersome. Just a tad. We've set up a perimeter with the Arc Royale and the RMP's anti-aircraft cannons. Trying to escape aboard your landing craft would be suicide. And don't even try bringing out your pans or soldats. That will make no difference. You knew about that, huh? He was our instructor, after all. Be that as it may. Oh. My friends have shown me a new potential path, and I'm not about to let that slip through my fingers. What the hell is... What's up with their hair? It's like it's like it can grow and she can take it off and grow back. What? Do your worst. I, Muse Egret of Class 7, will fight back with everything I've got. Muse. Hell yeah, that's more like it. That's right. This is not where our story ends. But I really wish we could end Cedric's story here. Not until we get our instructor back. Oh, very well. I suppose we'll have to break you before you really understand the position you're in. And we'll do so with the greatest that Thor's Class 1 has to offer. Show us how far you've come since the Grawl. We won't let our history stay our blades. So don't give us anything less than your all! Oh, shut up. <laughs> Wasn't planning on it, asshole. Yeah! I hope you're ready, your highness. I really like Ash. <laughs> yeah, Shirley's gonna be a problem. I've been waiting for a chance to cut loose. Let's do this. Well, it's a good thing we brought Fee here. I'm ready. Let's do this, new class seven. Did you enjoy the video? Please leave a like, subscribe, and all that YouTube good stuff. Any thoughts or feedbacks are welcome in the comments section down below. Here's a playlist of more Let's Plays, or you can check out this video if you prefer. Follow me on social media with links in the description, and thank you for watching, and on to the next episode.